Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Remember the Flowers. So y'all, before we jump into it, I just wanted to remind y'all that our Patreon is now up, and you can support the channel for as little as $5, and it'll definitely, definitely help us out, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chen, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Don't say that. Saving lives and screwing over Resume is what we're meant to do. You're living proof that we're doing what we're doing is worth it. Oscar's tail is wagging frantically. Despite how overzealous I personally think he's being, I can tell he's sincere. That's kind of you to say. I'm sorry, I'm not really used to being gushed over. You'll have to forgive him, he gets excited easily. But I agree with what he's saying. You have to become somewhat of a beacon of hope around here. Well, I'll at least try to do what I can. Don't force yourself. As long as you're alive and well, I'd say we did a pretty good job. Even Stan was singing your praises. After we first met, he went on and on about how impressive you are. Oscar crosses his arms and closes his eyes in thought. We've seen our fair share of casualties both in and out of Resume. Despite being one of the very first they took, you're doing the best out of any of them. I instinctively hold my hand over my chest, above my heart. I'd say that's more luck than skill on my part. Give yourself some credit. Luck or not, you're still here. That's all that matters in the end. I agree. Still, you gotta tell me about all your experiences. I'd love to hear. Ahem. <clears throat> um, I mean, if you're comfortable with it, that is. <laughs> You're fine, Oscar. I've gotten pretty good at telling people, as of late. Maybe I should hold a seminar. Oh, we have a conference hall you could use. Uh, maybe some other time. I'll be the first one in line. Oscar, not to rain on your parade, but are we supposed to be meeting up with Stan right now? Oh, crap. You're right. Um, hey, if it's alright with you, can I add you to my Axiom? I promise not to spam you or anything. Sure, I don't see why not. Awesome! The husky excitedly starts to send me his contact information. I'll make sure he doesn't. I'll make sure he doesn't go overboard. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll be fine. Heck yeah! If there's anything you need, Cyrus, please just let us know. I'm always happy to help. I appreciate it. Actually, now that you mention it, I do need some directions. After getting an apt enough description, I think I finally made my way to Vita's garden. I tug on my collar. It's definitely much more warm and humid over here. There's one door that's already wide open. I poked my head in to see what kind of garden could survive underground. The weed garden. Smoke that leafy green. <laughs> this room has an above average ceiling with several light fixtures. There are rows of plants of all ki kinds neatly organized throughout the space. It doesn't take me long to spot Vita. I'm caring for a pair of orchids. When they see me, they look surprised and set down a watering can. Oh, well, good evening, Cyrus Cantwell. Afternoon, Vita. Is this where you've been all day? Yes. Is that an issue? No, but I was trying to get a hold of you. Vita holds their, ax their axiomless arm up. I left that gadget in my office. It's my day off, so I wasn't expecting you to. I wasn't expecting to need it. I exhale with mild frustration. I guess that's fair. I used to turn my cell phone off for similar reasons. You're what? Never mind. I actually came because I had some questions to ask regarding my treatment. You're making good progress. There's nothing you should need to question. It's great to hear and all, but I'm gonna. But I'm going on a trip soon. It'll be a little while before our next session. Vita looks confused. What do you mean, a trip? I mean, a trip. Aaron, Silver, and I are going to go across the country for a little while. I wanted to know if there's anything I should do while I'm gone. I see. Let me think about it. When are you leaving? In the next few days. I might have something that could help. I've been tinkering with a device that, that should help your ports, along with carrying a mobile supply of fluids. Really? That'd be perfect. But why would you want to go so far away? Vita sounds just the tiniest bit anxious. It's a little silly. It's things sentimental, I guess you could say. That sounds even more ridiculous. Maybe so, but I think it'd be worth it. I'm talking about you leaving. I know it's for your re rehabilitation, but even just going to the hyena's gym is highly illogical. We've always done physical therapy down below. I know that you're a bit of a special case, but this just adds to the nonsense. Vita's almost rambling. It's so out of left field that I don't really know how to respond right away. Maybe I should mention where else I've where else I've gone, even to make a point. Uh, uh huh. Do you like need to get something off your chest? I thought you were smarter than this, Cyrus Cantwell. Again, that sounds like a personal problem. Is it even worth it? Aren't you scared? Not really. Why? What's got you so spooked? Why should I be scared? What if they find you while you're out there? What will you do? Who? Current? Yes, or whatever else you want to call it. If they find you, you're as good as dead. You know, I think I've cheated death long enough. 
This is not a joking matter, Cyrus Cantwell. For the first time since I've known them, the doctor starts getting huffy. Second, y'all. Alright. I had no idea there's such a sore spot for them. I give them a moment to compose themselves before opening my mouth again. Vita, when was the last time you left the base? I haven't. What? I haven't left since I was brought here, and I'm going to keep it that way. I see. That's your prerogative, and I'm not going to judge you on it. I don't want your pity, Cyrus Cantwell. I want you to realize the situation you've wound up in. You're being very careless. I'm well aware of how often you move around by yourself. It would be child's play for them to abduct you. Okay, and have they? Look, I'm not trying to belittle you or your history with Current. I'm sure there are things you'll never want to tell someone else. But after being in there for three centuries myself, most of which is in some sort of, in some sort of confinement, I think I'll risk taking a walk by myself every once in a while. Hmm. You're right. I apologize. It wasn't right of me to try to dictate your actions. You can say that again. I'm pretty sure we've both had enough of people doing that to us. Indeed, again, I am sorry. There's nothing to worry about. Apology accepted. Be to stay silent for a little while before picking up their watering can. If you have some time, I'd appreciate some help taking care of the plants. Once they've been sufficiently cared for, we can work on that upgrade. I don't mind. It's been a while, but I used to help take care of plants all the time. Really? Then things should go even faster. Vita directs me to a nearby table with several pieces of gardening equipment strewn about. I'm surprised something like this is even possible. I never thought plants could survive all the way down here. It's a relatively new advancement. With how desolate much of the land is, they had to improvise. Huh. As I make my rounds with a watering can of my own, something catches my attention. All the plants are labeled. While I can recognize most of them at a glance, the labels are names I've never heard of. There's a pot of daffodils labeled Sunbells. Despite that, some names stay the same. There's a small bush of roses correctly named. I'm gonna need to find a modern book on flowers. A lot of the names are tripping me up. I'm sure you'll get used to it. Just use your instincts. Right. We carry on in silence for most of the time we work. Every now and then I ask Vita some questions about themselves, just to break up the monotony. Apparently, Titania funds this garden herself as a thank you for Vita's services. What a bad deal. They really haven't left this place in years, huh? I can't imagine living like that. Something did resonate with me after dwelling on it. I do need to be a little cautious while we're traveling. Normally, I don't work unless scheduled. However, I'm willing to call it even as thanks for helping me in the garden. Thank you. I appreciate it. What did you come up with, anyway? Vita heads to their desk, opens a drawer, and then takes out something wrapped in cloth. I haven't had it fitted yet, but from measurements I took when we first met, it should suffice. At least until you return. They unwrap the cloth, revealing some kind of metal... thing. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It looks like a thin and oval metal strip. There are three indents spaced evenly throughout. It looks like it's segmented in order to be flexible, too. This is what I've been working on. Not only will it provide your provide your back with protection, but it should make it much more efficient to administer serum. You made this yourself? One second, y'all. It is water time. And we're back, y'all. Ah, hair on my keyboard. Okay. Alrighty. Amongst other things, yes. They point to their jaw replacement. Wait, they made that themselves? Wow, that's really impressive. You flatter me. I assure you, it's engineering at its most fundamental level. You say that, but I'm not so sure. In any case, take off your clothes, please. I'll show you how to do maintenance on it. Without delay, I start to pull my shirt and jacket over my head. Oh, excuse me. Uh, hold still while I apply it. Once again, I do as I'm told. Uh, it almost feels like an octopus is being suctioned all over my back. It makes me squirm just ever so slightly. To make sure it's properly fastened into my ports, pushing into each of the pushing into each of the indents as if they were buttons. This might take the cake for the least comfortable thing I've ever done. Thank you for the insight, Cyrus Cantwell. I'll be sure to take that into consideration for the next model. You are oh so very welcome, Doctor. Be sure to cite me properly. Vita continues to make sure everything is in place for the next few minutes. All right, that should do it. Vita walks back to their desk for a moment before they hand me some vials. This is still an enormous fork in progress, but every few days you should try to have Aaron insert these into your back. All he needs to do is open them and put them in the proper ports. So basically the same schedule as before, but just smaller doses? Yes, this serum is very much more is much more compact, and should boost your recovery by a significant amount. 
It wasn't meant to be used as a port as a portable option, but I suppose you can do it on the go. Is there any way to do it myself at some point? You could try taking it orally. It's not as effective, but I have seen some decent results. I see. That's good to know. Thank you. It's no trouble. I appreciate the help earlier. Could I come back to your garden and help again? <sighs> Sorry, y'all kind of just woke up. Took my uh, partner to work. <clears throat> All right, I haven't, hey, haven't, haven't even had my coffee yet. Vita's face softens up as much as their face can. I wouldn't be opposed. It's always nice having another cable, capable set of hands. I'll certainly do my best anyway. I take out my axiom and look at the time. It's a little after five. I should probably head back. I've got some prep work for the trip. Let me know when you're about to leave. I'll make some more supplies for you. Good thing I've already offered to help out, huh? No. This one's on me, Cyrus Cantwell. On one condition. You come back safe and alive. I'll make sure of it. Don't you worry. Stuff's probably gonna happen on this trip. That's how it usually works out. Hmm, no, no. I have sets of clothes along with various supplies laid out on my bed. I can figure out why I should bring it a small challenge. Even back in the day, I didn't go on many trips, let alone cross country. Oh shit, I don't even have a suitcase in here or anything. As I try to text, I text Aaron for help, I hear the door open behind me. Silver walks in carrying a few bags of his own and then places them in his corner. Welcome back. Thanks. What are you doing? Uh, attempting to prepare, but I'm not sure what to bring. Do you know where I can get a suitcase? Uh, probably in town, I get. Probably in town. Why? Uh, we're going to be away for at least a week. I'll need to have. I'll need to one to carry everything. Just use your axiom, but that's what we do. Did you forget? So what'd you end up buying? Smooth as ever, huh? Nothing special. Just some rounds of ammunition and more camping equipment. Silver pulls out the axiom on his right wrist. We're going to port to the. We're going to port to the nearest to the station nearest to your house. It's a lot farther than we thought, so we'll probably still drive for at least a day before getting there. He grabs one of his bags, turning it over and pouring the contents on the floor. I recognize most of it as standard camping equipment: lighters, a sleeping bag, canteens. There are some tools I can't entirely make out. Aaron should have everything else covered. All we got to do now is wait. Second, y'all, it is coffee time. Lord knows I need it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. Okay. Woo! Curb your enthusiasm. You'll wake up the whole base. Great show, by the way. Sorry, I'm excited. But... Well, I had a talk with Vita earlier. At the time, I was pretty confident, but now I'm starting to get a little worried. What if Current finds us? They won't. Your old house is so far away from any semblance of civilization. They aren't annoying enough to make an outpost out there. What about on the way there, the town, to town? And then we'll make a getaway and or kill them. You don't think this is our first time dealing with him, do you? <sighs> of course not, but do you want do you want to stay here? I I don't know. Hmm. Silver steps away from his pile of supplies and then moves over to my bed, looking over everything. If you didn't want to go, I doubt you'd go through all this trouble. Cyrus, we're all scared, or at the very least cautious. Every time we step foot outside of the base, we're aware of the danger that could be waiting for us. Silver lets out a laugh, lets out an exhale. Honestly, I kind of want to have a chat with Vita for putting those thoughts in your head. But at the end of the day, it's a reality that you, it's a reality you need to be aware of. Silver puts his arm around my tense shoulders. We're not going to let them take you away. Hell, the higher-ups wouldn't have approved this if they didn't think we were capable of protecting you. I know. I, I trust you. Just hate feeling so weak and powerless. I thought I had gotten used to it. For a while, I had. But now? I have something to lose again. And I'm scared of it being taken away. Silver pauses before leaning into my field of vision, making sure I'm looking him in the eye. Look at me, Cyrus. I will die before I let them take you again. I'm damn well sure Aaron will put himself in the way before I even have a chance. He squeezes my shoulder, trying to reassure me. You're in good hands, Cyrus. I promise. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. 
I'll see you next time. Don't forget to check out that Patreon, y'all. Bye-bye!